Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to Boston Motorsports on this rainy day, we're driving a 2020 Range Rover Sport HSE P525 Dynamic. That's a mouthful, and I probably said them out of order, but this is a really interesting vehicle to me because Range Rovers are so incredibly capable, comfortable, and shockingly fast. This has a five liter supercharged V8 with about 518 horsepower. And this thing really gets out of the hole. It's interesting because what it doesn't do is it's not out to go set a Nurburgring lap time record. It's not like an X5M or something like that. It just wants to be a comfortable, plush, lovely daily driver that gives you the fizz when you put your foot down. So it is raining. We're gonna go around this really quickly just because I don't wanna get too wet. Sorry to that plate, but obviously loads of space inside all of the things you need You can get an optional third row. We've got monster brakes up here on the fronts We've got a square setup 275 section tires on 22 inch wheels and in the back It's quite a comfortable place to put your family. It's a little Spartan in some respects, but we have what we need You know, we've got plenty of space for things for drinks for comfort we've got nice plush leather seats and in the front the front seats are so comfortable i'm really excited to take you for a drive in this thing but the most exciting thing about the sport is the engine got a nice v8 rumble that comes to life this is really something special That's insane. If I had that coming out of like a hot rod or a sports car, I'd be thrilled. And I'm getting it in a giant SUV that can have three rows. Let's clear this giant windscreen. I love <laughs> That's why you don't keep your windshield wipers on at a toll booth if you have to see somebody because it just flings the water off. So be kind. This thing has plenty of options, including a little refrigerator up here, which you can turn on to different levels, which I, you know, I guess I appreciate that. I don't often have the things that I need to refrigerate my car, but that's fine. Maybe rich people do. I'm not rich. And then down here, we've got glove box number one, glove box number two for all the things you need to hide. And like any good Range Rover, you've got to have that armrest here, which is kind of funny. It feels redundant on this side, but you know, it does the job and you can change where you'd like it to rest. To some, this may just look like a mall crawler, but it really is fairly capable off-road and you can adjust down here all of your settings. It'll tell you if you're in the mud or in the desert or in the sand or rock crawling. I mean, it's it's pretty wild what this can actually do. Not that you're gonna wanna go take your $100,000 truck out and get it all scratched up in the trees, but you could and you'll get home. Quite the opposite of ideal conditions, but let's see how she gets off to 60 miles an hour. is plenty. It makes no sense. It feels like this shouldn't be possible to be this comfortable and fast and shouty at the same time. This is quite entertaining. Besides the incredible growl of this V8, I'm most struck with its luxury. This is a really special and nice ride. This is not something that you're getting from your RSQ8 or your X5M. And this is supple. This is like Rolls Royce level. Wow, it soaks everything up. You'd think that being on 22 inch wheels, it would just transmit so much junk into the cabin. And I do feel the road for sure, but this suspension just really soaks it all up. It just mutes all of it.
so good. Passing Lexus is like nothing in this. They've got nothing on this ride quality. Uh, this is nuts. This is so comfortable. This is really luxurious. Like, I don't think I even felt this confident and comfortable in the Maybach GLS 600. I mean, think about that. That's, that's mind blowing because this is about 100 grand, maybe 130 if you spec it out. Uh, that is a far more expensive vehicle. And this, I probably enjoy more. I definitely like the driving experience more. I know they don't have the same purpose really in the market, but if we're just talking about driving experience in an SUV, this does the job. On the highway, it's really easy to drive. I'm not chasing the car at all. The steering is hmm, so choice is a relaxing thing to maneuver around traffic and it responds really quickly you know that's something that I'm really impressed with is just how easy it is to dip into the pedal and, and, and extract that power for creature comforts we've got our heated steering wheel button right here quite nice although it's a little weird because You've got the heating elements in the steering wheel, which you feel from the back and a little bit on the bottom. That's actually pretty dope, a GLE 63. And then you've got this silver like metal ring that goes around the front, which obviously is gonna have a different temperature. So if it's cold outside, that metal ring is gonna be really cold. So the front of your palm of your hand is gonna be, the heel of your hand is gonna be really cold. And then the rest of your hand is gonna be warm. I mean, not really a complaint, just kind of a strange thing to do. My heated seat controls are a little strange because I gotta push the ring and then I can scroll for my heated seats or cooled seats, which, you know, sometimes I just want a single button. And I find it interesting that there's a single button for the heated steering wheel, but I have to go through a process to get to it for my seats. You know, infotainment is ever evolving and creature comforts and HVAC systems are along for the ride, which is kind of unfortunate because sometimes you just want to like, blam, hit auto or hit the button and know where it is. I don't want to have to look because I feel like I have to take attention away from the road to do it got no one behind us we're in the wet let's do a little brake check oh yeah that's great that's what you want to see from a big heavy SUV that you can bring it back down now the pedal feel it's a little soft and I don't mean that in a boiled brake scary kind of way I just mean that it's like a luxurious brake pedal and being the sport I almost want a little more immediacy to the bite but it's livable and it's very easy to adapt to. I'm just impressed with how well this handles. A little wet, I'm gonna back up that throttle, but I still felt really good. I knew I had traction, I knew I've got grip. Like, this is, this is pretty shocking. They didn't just shove a motor in this without the thought of its suspension and the ability to put power down. This is like, a, feels like a well thought out vehicle. Now I can't speak to the reliability of a Land Rover. We all know reputations supersede pretty much everything else, but if you're gonna own this with a warranty, I'd feel pretty comfortable that this is my daily driver. This is genuinely good to drive. And if there's one powertrain that I'm probably gonna trust from Land Rover, oh my goodness, this Econoline looks like the ultimate drunk, scary driver. Frightening. This is just not a driving experience I've encountered in another brand. I have not felt like this in an Audi or a BMW or a Mercedes, even the Maybach. Man, this is good. I'll tell you what, I've driven the Defender. I would choose this over the Defender. And the Defender has cachet, it's cool. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool guy's car. And it's probably more capable off-road, but I don't need that. This is capable on-road, and you're still not gonna get stuck. I've seen Land Rovers do silly things on all seasons off-road. Like LR4s, just climbing things that 
They should not be able to climb. And yet here we are. Oh, this is nice. Maybe the world's most annoying directional sound, but I could live with that. I'm gonna be honest, I came into this not expecting to be entertained by the vehicle, but I'm walking away with confidence. I mean, the steering is weighted really lovely. It's got that luxurious feel, but I also know where I'm placing the vehicle. There's no dead space. I mean, this isn't a truck. It can do truck things, but it drives really well. doing this in this weather, I mean, not that it's like particularly inclement, but yeah, I don't have a care in the world. I'm not worried about it. And it sounds snarling mad. I mean, that's on tap anytime you want it. And this transmission channels this power to the ground so efficiently and quickly. I, I, I was unaware. I didn't know how good these new Land Rovers were. Final thoughts on the Range Rover Sport, the P525. It's got 518 horsepower. It's quick, it's throaty V8, makes you wanna keep pressing the pedal. Its comfort level is shockingly good. This is incredibly refined. I, I, I just, this is not the review I was expecting. I thought I was gonna have to try to find things I liked about it. I think this is what you buy when you're really honest about your use case and you drive it on the road a lot, Maybe you want to go fool around once in a while off-road or you got some crazy mountain house that you need unbelievable capability to get up the driveway before the snow plows come. Or maybe you just like the idea that you could go off-roading with your buddies in their Toyota Tacomas and still do all the things they can do in a hundred and something thousand dollar vehicle. I'm going to go bring this British brute back to the boys at Boston Motorsports. Thank you. Oh, that's not going to be good for you. Yeah, but just accept that you've decided to be in this lane. You'll figure it out later. You don't want to mess with that guy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. This guy doesn't know where to go because he took a wrong turn. Uh-oh. I guess you're going to Boston with me. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. I do wish people would turn on their headlights when they drive in the rain or in the dark or just, you know, that seems like a reasonable ask. Americans seem to not believe they need to turn their headlights on. I don't understand why that is a particular liberty they feel they want to exercise, but, you know, you should be seen if you're on the road. And daytime running lights, especially when they only turn on the front, aren't really helping anybody because we can't see it behind you. I'm always shocked at the off-road capabilities of these things because they're so incredibly comfortable and refined on the road that you think, well, how could it really actually be good in a, in a bad situation? They're nuts. I've, I have friends with big body Land Rovers, LR4s, Discos, and we've done some pretty abusive things to these things. And I mean, they just take it. They just crawl and they mud and they don't drown in the water. Like it, it's pretty nuts.